but that now our focus is to go back to Parliament to vote for the first time in 300 years that the land must go back to black people. So we know that uh, those that uh, refuse to hand over our land back to our people, they're going to fight with everything. So it's something that we expected. Those unfounded accusations, we're saying they must bring them to the fore so that they can be tested in court. Uh, 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 as far as we're concerned, they're just rumors that are trying to distract us, but it's not going to happen. We're very focused. For more on this now, we cross to our reporter live on the scene, Busisiwe James Anamandashe, uh, live out there in East London as well. Busisiwe, do detail the latest for us. Very good evening, Arabile. Yes, we are coming to you live from the East London ICC, where the EFF is holding its people's assembly. It's expected to elect a new leadership. You'd remember that in 2016, uh, the provincial structure was disbanded for not doing well in the 2016 general elections. It's expected to be a tight contest between Yazim and Vena, who are contesting for the chairperson position. Uh, but to tell us more about the conference, which started late uh, today. I'm joined by EFF Chairperson Advocate Dalim Bofu. Let's perhaps start with getting the big elephant out of the room. Uh, we spoke to the provincial convener earlier today who said that the allegations against uh, EFF Deputy uh, President are just uh, manufactured by those who do not want land expropriation. Uh, does the national leadership has hold this view also? No, uh, what we have said is that um, we have the gentleman who was involved in that matter, or rather was mentioned, has issued a statement. And uh, our only concern really is that that gentleman is himself a, a member of the EFF. So we have to deal with it at that level, obviously, because a member of ours has been uh, named in the report. But uh, all this other nonsense about uh, the brother and, and the linkages and so on, we think it's just a halabaloo uh, over nothing. But um, what we're going to do is uh, on Tuesday, this Tuesday, we have told South Africans that we'll be, the leadership will be holding a media briefing where we will address the matter fully. So all the questions, of, I'm sure SABC will be there, all the questions that uh, South Africans would like to be answered, they must uh, make sure that the media raises those questions uh, to us on, on Tuesday. Uh, but uh, no, otherwise, uh, for us, uh, life goes on. Uh, we've been watching what's happening in the media, that other people are, are saying that they're going to be challenging the report. Um, even uh, young Brian Shibambu says he's challenging the report, and I've seen one or two others as well. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, at that level, we'll uh, wait and see. But we, there's nothing really to be concerned about as far as the organization is concerned, because uh, we're quite clear that... We, the organization has never received uh, even one cent from VBS. And are you not worried are going to, to taint the image of the EFF as it's a party that's known to speak out uh, against corruption? No, certainly not. We think once the facts uh, are out there, uh, the you know the people, our supporters, we will we will be fortified by the actions that we're going to take and uh, the statements that we're going to make. But um, you know, our detractors obviously will be jumping up and down. But uh, that's politics. Uh, we expect them. But we're quite happy. Uh, don't get me wrong. That uh, the the public seems to be holding the. EFF by a higher moral standard. We think that's very good because if it was another political party, they probably would have expected them to to um, be corrupt anyway. So the fact that the public is beginning to see the role that we have played in corruption means that uh, the public uh, is uh, is is uh, seeing the EFF's work. So there's a positive out of this, which is that uh, the public is clearly aware that we are indeed corruption busters and the levels of surprise when they see what they see in the media are justified and, and we will therefore deal with those issues on Tuesday. And now that we've dealt with the big elephant in yes. the room, back to the uh, people's uh, uh, assembly, how's the mood inside? Has credentials been adopted? Yes, no, the, the mood inside is electric. I mean, we, this is uh, for us a very exciting moment, actually an emotional moment, because uh, as the leadership, we took a firm decision around about, I think, May, uh, that we must 
do all the provinces and do elective conferences. We expected fierce contests, and indeed there have been fierce contests. Uh, this is now uh, the last one, the ninth of the nine provinces that were having this conference. So after this, the day or the minute this conference is finished, then you must know that we are the EFF will truly be in election mode. It was very important for us to first get our own house in order, get democratically elected leadership, allow for contestation, uh, and uh, even here we expect that there will be contestation. I think in the majority of the provinces there were fierce contests, but those contests were happening within the rules of the EFF, and uh, democratic outcomes were accepted the, by the losers, were embracing the winners, and uh, this is something unheard of in this country. There is no other organization that can hold nine provincial conferences uh, incident-free, totally democratic, open uh, con uh, contestation, and yet emerge much stronger. I challenge any organization in this country to make that claim, that it can uh, set a program of, of, of these elective conferences within two or three months and achieve them as we have done. And that, that augurs very well for the EFF, for the democratic culture in the EFF, and we have allowed people to express themselves, to differ, as long as you know they do so in a disciplined manner. You'll remember that in this very uh, room, there was an ANC conference which was called the Festival of Chairs, where people were beating each other. So where you are standing, there were ambulances and all that. But uh, if you go in here, you'll see a jovial mood. Yes, uh, high contestation, but uh, within a democratic culture. And lastly, I know time is against us. Uh, speaking of getting your house into order, that disgruntled members of the EFF outside who are saying that a ward, uh, uh, delegates from a certain ward have been kicked out and they're not happy about that. Why did you kick the, those delegates? Yes, no, for, we've dealt with that matter. No, fortunately uh, as it happened, it was a matter that I had dealt with personally. What happened in that particular case is that a few weeks ago I came here to deal with the, specifically the Buffalo City delegations and uh, <clears throat> we uh, excuse me, audited and, uh, and, and ensured that some of the delegates would uh, either were added or subtracted and that was agreed. What happens that at head office there was an administrative error where the old names were put in. So we had to meet as the leadership and we took a decision. We couldn't allow the people who had already been uh, disallowed through a proper process because otherwise we would have had to call all the other people here. Yeah. But uh, the conference has now accepted that explanation and we will go back to the office and check what happened to him. Advocate, thank you so much for your okay. time. Well, Arabile, Advocate Dalimbo for saying that everything is in order, a jovial mood inside as delegates prepare to elect and vote for new leadership in the province. Back to you in studio. Yeah, Busisi, some great reporting out there. Thank you so much for that. Busisi, James Anamandashe there out in East London.